Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, there are a few movies in kind of our modern American context that have really become some of our favorite movies, or at least really well known, and it's because of the characters in those movies. I would say that a lot of those characters, or kind of the main character in the movie, some of these movies, is an anti-hero. You may have never heard that word before, but you definitely know the, the character when you see them. And so, this first person on the screen is the man with no name from The Good, Bad, and The Ugly. And then there's Don Corleone from The Godfather. There is John Rambo from all the Rambo movies, that Rambo series. And then, most recently, Deadpool from the newest Deadpool movie. Now, if you've ever seen any of these movies, you know that these main characters are kind of shady. They ultimately get across what they want to get across. They accomplish the goal that they set out to accomplish, but they kind of do it in morally shady ways. They don't really kind of fit that typical hero mode of kind of making sure that they do everything the right way, just the way that everybody else should be doing it. Uh, they don't really do it that way. Uh, they're morally ambiguous. They see something wrong in their own little part of the world, in their own little kingdom, and they want to fix it, or they want to make it, make it right. And so they try their very hardest to, to do that. Um, but sometimes it's not done in the most uh, morally upright ways. In our Lenten sermon series, Witnesses to Christ, we've been looking at various people's interaction with Jesus, those witnesses to Jesus and His passion, like Pastor Dave was mentioning before the service. And these people ultimately see Jesus in his grace and his glory. Now, who we are looking at today is a man known as Barabbas. We've kind of heard this man. He kind of gives us the creeps, maybe. He uh, kind of almost has this evil name that goes down throughout history. But we all know the Barabbas as that awful, rotten man who was set free instead of Jesus. Now, what we're going to look at today is that this man, who is a robber and a murderer, rightfully so, because that's how the scriptures call him, but he's ultimately an anti-hero. He tries his very hardest to get across what he wants to, but of course, what he does wrong is the things that he is remembered for. But his crimes were not senseless. His actions were very wrong and deserving of prison, um, but... That's the point of this sermon series, right? We get to see various people interact with our Lord Jesus Christ, whether that be Mary and her wonderful kind of excessive gift of that ointment, or whether it be Malchus, who was in the wrong place at the wrong time, or even the murderer, robber, criminal, Barabbas. So let's learn a little bit more about Barabbas. In our gospel reading today from John, we hear that he is a robber. John says, now this man was a robber. That's not a whole lot, so we'll go to the other Gospels to round him out a little more. Matthew says, and they had then a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. In Mark, he writes, and among the rebels in prison, so he's called a rebel, who had committed murder in the insurrection, there was a man called Barabbas. And then finally from Luke, a man who had been thrown into prison for an insurrection started in the city and for murder. Um, so not really a good resume for our hero, our anti-hero, Barabbas. Um, but kind of a common theme in Mark and Luke that we can kind of see is there was this insurrection that was started. And I think that is the real way to figure out why Barabbas did the things that he did and why he was ultimately thrown into prison. And so we don't really know which insurrection Barabbas was part of, but we do know what they are. These insurrections were small little uprisings against the Roman government because there were many people groups that did not like the way the Roman government was treating them. They thought it was unfair. They didn't like it. And so they wanted to revolt against the Roman government, to rebel against the Roman government. We hear it in our four Gospels, but then we also hear it in Luke, his account in Acts. And he says this in Acts chapter 5. For before these days, Theodos rose up claiming to be somebody, and a number of men, about 400, joined him. He was killed, and all who followed him were dispersed and came to nothing. After him, Judas the Galilean rose up in the days of the census and drew away some of the people after him. He too perished, and all who followed him were scattered. 
So these insurrections started out as really wanting to have a better life, but they were met with zero success rate in front of the Roman government. They were strong, they were powerful, they were some of the most brutal people in all of history, and so all these little tiny insurrections didn't really amount to anything. But we hear that Barabbas was part of one of these, or maybe a couple of these, and he got caught in the last one. But at least he was basically a freedom fighter in the end. He was trying to allot a better life for at least himself. Now, I, we don't know a whole lot about Barabbas, so we can probably say that at least he did it for himself. I don't know if he did it for anybody else, if he did it for family or friends or anything like that, but he was trying in the best way that he saw possible to carve out a better kingdom for himself and maybe even the people around him too. But how he did it was he met violence with violence. He saw the Roman government doing all their violent acts, and so he says, all right, I'm going to try and match that. I'm going to try and take them down by having, uh, being violent against them too. Now, the crazy thing about all this is that Jesus is on trial for the same thing. In the eyes of the Roman government, Jesus is also a rebel. So when Pilate puts these two before the crowd, they are really on trial for the same crime. And so these, these two men, Barabbas and Jesus, at least share that. But what might be more shocking is that they also share something else. Ancient records tell us that Barabbas had a first name because Barabbas would have just been his title, something that he was known by, which ultimately is in Aramaic, means son of the father. But Barabbas' first name was Jesus. And so we have Jesus Barabbas and Jesus of Nazareth. We typically know Jesus of Nazareth by Jesus Christ, but as Pastor Dave pointed out in the chapel message this past week, he really would have been known as Jesus of Nazareth because Christ is really a title. Um, so these men have this name, Jesus, a name which ultimately means God saves, and each in their own way lived up to it. Barabbas sought to save his people by trying to take down the Roman government, by meeting violence with violence, by carving out this better kingdom in his own mind through his own way. He was going to do that by himself and in a way that he thought was really good. And this was by fair means or not so fair means. Jesus Barabbas did this by stealing or killing, as long as it got him closer to his goal. But Jesus of Nazareth sought to save his people from Satan's rule and the bondage of sin, not the bondage of the Roman government. And really, this is what Jesus has been doing throughout his entire ministry. He has been bringing the kingdom of God to earth. Jesus destroys Satan's kingdom with each sermon he preaches, with each, uh, you know, whatever disease it was that he would heal. He would break and hinder every desire of the devil in all of his kingdom. He would not take a life, but he would give his life. He wouldn't kill, but he would heal and raise the dead. And Jesus of Nazareth was ultimately a freedom fighter too. But the kingdom he sought was not of this world. The kingdom he saw was people lost in darkness, all surrounded by himself, the light, the light of the world, which in him there is no darkness at all. Of course, it would be really cool to see Jesus slinging lightning bolts around and taking down the Roman government, taking down every kind of enemy that we saw and every enemy that we kind of saw in our own minds as someone we didn't like and kind of walking away like this big hero from an explosion, right? That would be really cool, but that's not what... Jesus' plan is. He, he even actually addresses that in our gospel reading today. He says, um, this is what he says in the gospel reading today, that it was, I'm sorry, <laughs> if my kingdom were not of the, or if my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting that I might not be delivered over to the Jews, but my kingdom is not of this world. The kingdom of God won't be established through violence. It won't be established through making us look like the rest of the world and kind of meeting that violent act. Jesus actually won't even fight at all. Jesus will kind of just be shackled, he will be chained, and he will be pierced to a cross all for us. He wouldn't even fight at all. He would actually establish his kingdom through defeat. So the crowd cries out, not this man but Barabbas. 
This is the crowd's choice at the trial of Jesus, but really we face this decision each and every day of our lives too. It's hard for us to wrap our minds around victory through defeat. We get that Jesus died for our sins. We can say that. We kind of read it in the scriptures that this is what happened. This is what happened for us. We can see in the scriptures that 2,000 years ago, Jesus suffered the worst death possible by the hands of the Roman soldiers. But when it comes to living out our own lives as the body of Christ incarnated in his church in this day and age, in this modern time and context, well, we, we really don't like defeat. We don't like personally to experience the defeat that comes along with living out our lives as Christians. We really want nothing to do with it. So we can often shout too, along with the crowd, not this man, but Barabbas. And whether you know these movies or not, well, then we choose Jesus Barabbas and not Jesus Christ. And so whether we, you know these movies or not, there are times when we choose to act like the characters in these movies rather than acting like Jesus. Take Don Corleone, for instance. He was so in love with his family. He cared for them so deeply that he really didn't care what he had to do to other families to take them down and make a spot for himself and his family. And how often do we kind of do that for ourselves, too? Whether it just be ultimately the self or whether people we know and like and love or what we do to other people to kind of make a living better for ourselves. You take the man with no name from the good, bad, and the ugly. He was a Western cowboy. And like any Western cowboy, ultimately he is out to try and get the big bounty, try and get that big cash prize, get that big cash money. And so how often do we kind of do this too sometimes? We don't do it by stealing, but we can really do it in our jobs too. We go and we are only pursuing money for ourselves rather than maybe fulfilling a vocation that God has given to us with our talents and abilities that we have that God has given to us. Then there's John Rambo, who was really a misunderstood Vietnam veteran who chooses to take down an entire police force rather than come to some common ground. How often do we feel misunderstood or not heard? And so rather than trying to find some common ground, we, like John Rambo, choose to destroy everything around us or at least put up walls so that no one can get to us. And then there's Deadpool, most recently. And ultimately, he is a man who wants to escape. He wants to escape everything that's going on in his life. And if he can't escape it, well, then he's just going to kind of destroy it. Um, we can kind of do this in our own lives because we might not be a gunslinging, sarcastic maniac <laughs> like Deadpool, but we can want to escape our problems. And so we might do that in unhealthy ways with substance abuse or maybe in other unhealthy ways. So like the crowd, our hearts often shout, not this man, but Barabbas. Like anti-heroes, we choose to establish the world around us and we choose to kind of be in this kingdom that we've set up for ourselves, that we've kind of allotted, we've kind of won at least a little part of it because deep down inside of us, that's what we like to do. We like to fight and we like to carve out this little spot for ourselves so that we can say, that's mine, that's my own. And it's ultimately because of what's been passed down to us. Ever since Adam and Eve fell in the Garden of Eden, we have inherited this spirit of sin that just wants to fight against God, fight against his kingdom, and really establish something that we have at least had for ourselves. Now, thanks be to God that the choice of acceptance, who we accept into our lives and who we kind of act like, is not the decision that matters. Because the decision that matters is who will go to the cross and be the sacrifice for the entire world? Who will go to the cross and be stricken, smitten, and afflicted for us and in our place so that we wouldn't have to do that, so that we wouldn't have to face that defeat eternally? Who would go to the cross even though he is rejected by the crowd and yes, even rejected by us at times, and go to that cross for us. Well, that is wonderful that God has done that for us, and ultimately God answers that for us, because God shouts out from heaven, and he proclaims to us and for us, not Barabbas, but this man, because it is ultimately Jesus who goes to that cross for us. Like I said, we know Jesus by that other name, and that is Jesus Christ. Christ meaning the chosen one. 
Jesus was chosen by God to go to the cross for us because Jesus was not going to fight it with violence at all. He was not going to establish his kingdom through violence, but he was going to establish his kingdom through his own defeat. God knew that the crowd would choose Barabbas. God knows that there are points in times when we still choose the Barabbases in our lives. But, and we choose to act like that because we like to think that there's a good enough reason for it. But Jesus comes as God's chosen one to totally act in love, not in self-interest, not in violence, and not in the way of this world, because he chooses to establish a kingdom that is not of this world. So in this wonderful act of love, we see the kingdom of God established forever. In this kingdom, there is a peace that surpasses all understanding, because no matter what happens, we know who is ruling and reigning. No matter what it looks like, no matter who it looks like is in charge, it is ultimately God who is in charge. It is Jesus who reigns even though the crowd chose Barabbas. It is Jesus who reigns even though we reject Jesus still. Jesus reigns even when it seems like all hope is lost. Thanks be to our King who suffered death and hell for us and in our place so that we might live with Him and His kingdom even now in this life. So as we go throughout our lives, we hold on to this peace that is given to us as citizens in Jesus' kingdom, a peace that is given to us each and every day of our lives. Amen. Please stand. Now may this peace that surpasses all understanding guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen.